Anger is typically described as something negative or counterproductive, something to be avoided. But the Hulk uses his anger to empower himself, to make him tougher. But that's just in comic books. That's not in real life. Or is it? What do you think, baby She-Hulk? I'm Rusty Ward, and I'm here at New York Comic Con for the latest episode of Science Friction. Together with baby She-Hulk, a.k.a. my daughter, and Joanne, a.k.a. my wife. If anger is so terrible, then why is it stuck around for the past 200,000 years? It must serve some purpose. Well, the most obvious one is it helps us in bargaining. It helps us get what we want from other people, either a cable bill rebate or not being eaten by a pack of wolves. But what about the physical benefit? Scientists at Bangor University in 2009 found that athletes that tried to recreate anger before events performed 25% better than those who tried to be happy. This worked really well for boxing and soccer, things that involve kicking and punching, less so for complex tasks. So if you're Luke Cage trying to fight the rhino, this is great. Not so much if you're Reed Richards trying to save the multiverse with a quantum equation. So anger can enhance your performance, but can it increase your strength to superhuman levels like the Hulk? Well, if you get angry enough, you trigger the fight or flight response. During the fight or flight response, your body releases epinephrine, norepinephrine, and over a dozen other hormones into your body. These have a number of different effects. Your heart rate and blood pressure increase. Your veins constrict so more blood gets to your muscles. Your pupils dilate so more light is let in. Your airways relax, letting in more oxygen. Your metabolism goes into hyperdrive so you can break down more glucose. Non-critical functions like digestion and your immune system shut down. And your brain starts pumping out opioids so you don't feel pain. So this definitely enhances our strength. But how much it enhances our strength depends on the level of stress we're under. Vladimir Zatsiorsky at Penn State University is a biomechanics expert who's found that there's different levels of strength. There's maximal strength, the amount we're able to consciously lift or press. Then there's absolute strength, the amount we're able to lift or press before our body starts to break down. Typically, we're consciously cut off from our absolute strength because if we were to regularly access it, we would do damage to our bodies. But under extreme amounts of stress, we can access our absolute strength and get stronger. Everybody's heard anecdotal stories of the person who's able to lift a car when someone's trapped underneath it. One of these people is Tom Boyle. He lifted a 3,000 pound Camaro until two of its wheels were off the ground and the person trapped underneath was able to escape. He clenched his jaw so hard that eight of his teeth broke, but he didn't even feel it until after he got home. Tom is a professional weightlifter whose normal deadlifting weight is 700 pounds. Half a Camaro is significantly more than that, so he was clearly tapping into reserves that weren't part of his normal strength. This may have been an example of superhuman strength, but it's an account told by a few witnesses, not a controlled scientific experiment. Ethically, scientists can't recreate these events, so they shy away from saying the phenomenon of hysterical strength actually exists. But if hysterical strength does exist, and you can access it because you fear for someone's life, maybe you could access it through other stress-inducing emotions, like rage. What we do know is that anger makes you a better fighter, more resistant to pain, and enhances your strength. So the next time somebody tells you that anger is a destructive emotion, you tell them, You're damn right it is! That's right, Bane. Yeah! Thanks for watching. Subscribe for future episodes. Check out some of the previous episodes and let me know what superpower you want.